Good morning, everybody. Good morning, welcome to Austin. Welcome to Pascal Editor's Day. I believe this is, uh, if not the largest, one of the largest Editor's Day yet. I appreciate y'all coming. Um, had a great event last night. Uh, hopefully you all were able to uh, participate in the launch event and even stick around for uh, entertainment later in the evening. Uh, Dead Mouse did a great job. Uh, before we get started, I want to call out a few folks in the audience who are joining us today, just um, some partners and customers of ours. First of all, we've got a few folks from Micron here, uh, Chris and Marcus. Uh, if any of you guys, why don't you stand up and raise your hand. Um, if any, uh, if you guys want to uh, touch base with them later on, ask any questions, we appreciate uh, them coming. Uh, they were a huge part of uh, pulling 1080 together with, uh, with G5X, so we appreciate them being here. Some of our, uh, also new to an editor's day, we have a few of our system builder partners here, our enthusiast uh, boutique, pushing the edge, uh, super excited about 1080 and I'm excited about them being here. Um, Kel, Falcon Northwest, why don't you stand up? Wallace, uh, main gear, is Kel here? Wallace, we see you guys, what's that? They're on the way. All right, well anyway, <laughs> main gear origin, uh, uh, Falcon Northwest and CyberPower uh, folks are going to be here later if you want to if you want to touch bases with them. So uh, with that, get get started on just a quick quick intro. I uh, wanted to welcome you guys in the event uh, yesterday our Pascal launch. I think uh, worldwide we got a, a great deal of coverage from from all of you. We really appreciate that. We announced four things at the end of the day. I think we announced five initiatives. Uh, but Ansel. Uh, a studio, a photography studio inside your PC. I hope you've all had a chance to demo it. If you haven't, please go in the, uh, go in the back, demo it, upload some photos uh, or some 3D, 3D bubbles. Um, in the, on the side, you've got images captured by Ansel. We've got a huge mural in the back that was captured by Ansel. We're super excited about what Ansel's gonna uh, allow for uh, user-generated content um, inside of games. VR Works, we announced positional it's not really positional audio, I'll call it spatial audio, uh, ray trace bounced audio. Um, we didn't have a demo last night of this, it's the newest addition to VR Works, but we do have a demo in the back, uh, in, I think it's in the VR tent, is that right Jason? Yes, in the VR tent. Uh, if you have an opportunity, this is our, our first reveal of adding a fully immersive experience inside of VR Works beyond just visual. Um, but we're adding audio and there'll be new things announced and uh, talked about later in terms of additions to VR Works. VR Funhouse, check that out. Uh, the VR Funhouse demo is going to be our demo that we pack all of our VR Works technology into. Um, it's right now the physical simulations inside of uh, VR Funhouse are amazing. We're gonna put it on uh, Steam uh, ultimately so anybody can enjoy and we're gonna open source it so the community can add to VR Funhouse. We think we're really looking forward to where that's going to go. We announced the new King, some new products, GTX 1080, uh, GTX 1070. Super excited about it. Uh, we're going to cover this in a lot more detail later on, the architecture, answer all your questions. Um, excited about the price point. Um, in terms of performance gap, leap from generation to generation, when you guys get your hands on boards and start testing, I think you're going to be blown away at how much faster we have moved the, uh, the industry forward going from uh, Maxwell to Pascal, and you're gonna see really the benefits of not just 16 fin fed, but the Pascal architecture. Super excited about that. Uh, we also talked about a new way to render. Um, rendering in, with a multi-projection, 16 core multi-projection. Jonah's gonna go in a lot more detail uh, as displays take different shapes and forms. Uh, the rendering of the object needs to take different shapes and forms, not just for efficiency, but also to make sure it's more pixel perfect. Uh, so these are the four main main uh, announcements relative to Pascal the event last night. Um, there was one more, an initiative that we, we kicked off called hashtag save Tom. <laughs> our, 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 much beloved, our much beloved Tom Peterson uh, is, is now had his his salary doubled. Um, it was a global initiative to, uh, to, to make sure that he's loved. Um, I, I'd like everybody in here to give Tom a hug before you leave, please. That's the Save Tom, Save Tom initiative. Okay, so uh, with that, let me talk about the agenda just briefly. These are the things we're gonna cover today. Um, I did the welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, super excited about the launch and, and you guys being here. Uh, Pascal Architecture, esteemed Jonah Alvin, 
uh, architect uh, uh, extraordinaire is going to be up and talking about the Pascal uh, architecture. Um, of course, he'll be around, we'll all be around during the breaks and afterwards to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, Tom is going to get up and talk about advancements we've made in, in uh, uh, GPU Boost and some SLI. We've also got some new news relative to SLI that he's going he's to cover. Uh, have a lunch, demos. You guys hopefully will all have a chance to get through the demos. Second, after lunch, uh, Tony Tomasi is going to talk about in more depth about Ansel, the implementation. We've got a couple other surprises for you during his talk. Um, Rev uh, from the uh, Content Tech team is going to talk about VR Works. Then we'll break the demos. We typically have Editor's Day, I don't know if you're here for Maxwell, it was two full days. A lot of information. We're compressing this into about four, four and a half hours today. So we're going to try and keep it moving. Um, so with that, I think my job is to get off stage and let Jonah start to talk hey, about hey, the architecture. What yeah? They, what can they write about it? Oh, sorry. There is one more slide. Damn. <laughs> You know, this slide scares me. It's like a nuclear warning. So, so, but BDR makes me uh, makes me say it. So, embargo. Um, this embar the presentations today are embargoed until the 17th. And let me get out of the way so you can all make make sure you take a picture of that and remember it. So, all information. Of course, the information is out last night. Was out last night. I appreciate every all the all the great things you guys said about Pascal and the launch. The information about about uh, the architecture and everything else covered today is embargoed until the the 17th, 6 a.m. Pacific time. If you have any questions about that, BDR is where, you all know Burke, BDR or Burke in the back, um, you can ask them about specific, there's Burke about specific embargoes. Okay, with that, we're gonna get into the meat and uh, on to Jonah. Thank you all very much. Okay, there we go, I got my slides, cool. Uh, this mic's okay? Yes. Cool, great, okay, cool. Okay, so hi everybody, thank you for, for coming here this morning and for joining us last night. Uh, I hope you're not uh, not too tired from the later night festivities. Um, so I wanted to basically kick off by just going through some of the nuts and bolts of the architecture for you guys. I know that uh, this is something you guys are always interested in hearing about, <laughs> and uh, so to start, uh, I just wanted to sort of bring up the agenda slide from yesterday, you know, pa Pascal, you know, this, is, this has been a multi-year uh, effort for us. You know, Dennis mentioned yesterday, you know, a very large team working for a long time um, on a lot of big challenges. Uh, you know, what, is, what are the next major architectural steps we want to take in the design? Um, you know, the, the change of 16 FinFET coming in, you know, the biggest change to process technology and transistor architecture in years and years in the semiconductor industry, sort of making that transition well. Um, figuring out how to, how to run single-ended signaling faster than than has ever been run before and, and faster than anybody might have thought was been possible a few years ago, trying to figure that out. Um, and then craftsmanship, you know, I talked about that yesterday, I'll talk about that more today, about just that, that was kind of a, a theme for the whole team through this process was just being incredible craftsmen in the work that we do. Just like, you know, if you're, if you're a woodworker building a wooden desk and caring about the joints and how everything fits together, that's that was the mentality you know, of the whole team in this process. Every part of the team, the, the architects, the chip designers, the, the board designers, everyone, and I hope you'll, you'll feel that craftsmanship you know, in, in the results that, that you have, you, your experience with the card. Um, and then, of course, you know, the new technology that Jensen mentioned yesterday, simultaneous uh, multi-projection. So, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to start with things without the classical block diagram, right? So there, so, so there you go, you can get a picture of that, everybody. So just, uh, you know, before we get into the nuts and bolts, just kind of, you know, hitting the high level, you know, key points of the design, you know, of course, lots of transistors, um, you know, the clocks, we talked about the clocks yesterday, we'll talk more about the clocks today, you know, we're very proud of the clock speeds that we achieve in this design. Uh, 1.61 gigahertz is the base clock, and then 1.73 is the boost clock, and as you saw yesterday, uh, this this chip over overclocks really, really nicely. And, uh, you know, we'd never seen a GPU above 2 gigahertz before with, with anything that was less than insane cooling solutions, and this one uh, gets above there, so it's really nice to, to see that. Um, and then, you know, we have the speeds and feeds there, and then the, the GDR 5X memory, which we'll talk about more, uh, which is, you know, the, the next generation memory, you know, the first new memory architecture basically in seven years since we had uh, the, the G5 uh, come out in, in 2009. Okay, so first, uh, you know, I talked about craftsmanship, uh, you know, there, you know, 
I, I want to sort of bring up one of the areas of craftsmanship which the team was very focused on there, which is craftsmanship related to speed. Um, you know, this for, for the for the chip designers. You know, this you know board designers is you know acoustics, regulator efficiency. You know, Jensen talked about that yesterday. Uh, you know, every generation we're learning more about how to be better at our craft and, and raising the bar there. For the chip designers, speed is really one of the key elements of craftsmanship, right? You know, if you're, you could have a design that's built very well overall, but you just have one path that's slow, and that slow path will set the speed of the entire chip. So you have to have the whole team have the right mentality and all working together to really tune that design up. And it's a, it's a bigger challenge going to the new process node like 16 FinFET because the properties of all your paths kind of change around, right? So if you just take an old design and flip it over, the work you did last time that made it made things work out well might not actually make things work out well this time. So you really got to come into it as this is a new challenge and just be ready to face that challenge. And going into 16 FinFET and being, you know, scientists understanding what the process was about, understanding what it was looking for in terms of paths and designing the chip for 16 FinFET was a big focus. Uh, for the team. And just to explain this picture here, so I, I just took a snapshot, this is uh, one of the p parts of the chip. Um, you, we look at charts like this all the time, but basically what you're seeing is um, on, the, on the bottom axis is the speed that uh, the speed the chip would be running at for that given num that given path, and then the y-axis is the number of paths that, that are slower than that speed, right? So for example, if I take the dark green, which is kind of an earlier part of the process, right? Um, the slowest path was it would, would have given us a 1325 megahertz boost clock, which obviously wouldn't have been as exciting, right? Um, and then as you go along, you had kind of you know 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 paths that violate that, and then at some point it really starts shooting up. You get you know thousands of paths that you know at this point you know kind of 16 you know 1600, 1650 ish or whatever is kind of what we would have been able to uh, to do with the, with those thousands of paths, right? So. So that, but but that's you know that's where we, you you get in and you do more work, right? So we, we really worked hard on this. Um, we learned a lot from past generation, and I think we did a we, we you know, we're really happy with the results in the end. So you see here, basically, you know we figured out we we figured out what was going on with those paths down there. We cleaned those up. We were able to make all the paths a lot faster. Just again, just the team just working, working, working to get that timing to be really nice. Um, and then what you see in the end is kind of a what you'd want to see, which is basically a pretty sharp slope up, right? You don't want to see one or two paths or a hundred paths sticking out. You kind of want to see that, you know, that this, uh, basically, if you wanted to push any further, it would have cost you like 800 years or whatever, right? And then you sort of say, well, then I guess I'm done. I kind of, I, you know, I, I got what I could out of the design. So, uh, so you know, we're, we're really proud of the frequency of the ship. Um, and, you know, this is really what it came from. It's basically just a lot of uh, knowing, knowing the technology and then, you know, a lot of hard work by the team to, to really try to make sure the design was what was done well. You know, it, we, we didn't like just throw a whole bunch of flops in the design and brute force it, right? It was more about just taking the design and taking these paths and, and really crafting them well, taking the ones that, that needed some timing help and doing that design work to do that to get the good speed results we have.